Uh, briefly this morning, I want to take another step toward um, what I've had on my heart, and we sang it. Isn't God faithful? Isn't God faithful? Has He ever let you down? Will He ever let you down? Why? Because He's faithful. And I, I was going to do, um, you know, periodically because we have so many new people, and plus we need the, uh, the word watered in our life, the seed watered and growing up in our life that much more. I was going to go into a stewardship type of series, and I'll probably over the next couple of weeks do that, do that. But, you know, before, before I want to give you the principles of how God has, um, you know, sanctioned that we receive His help and His provision is through different principles. But I, I don't want to teach those principles yet until you know that God is faithful. And the instructions that God gives in His Word, He's faithful and He's dependable. And, and what God has said, um, that's the way the kingdom operates. Seek ye first, what? The kingdom of God and His righteousness. And then in, in the Amplified says, seek the kingdom and His righteousness and His way of doing and being right. And his way of doing and being right. Then all these things, see, we're talking about seek God. We're talking about God's faithfulness. Now let's talk about some principles. And thank God we are now layered with faithfulness principles, and we know God's going to make it happen because he's, he's not a liar. It's possible for him to lie. So we, we can gar be guaranteed that when we follow God's plans for him to be our source, for him to be our provider, yeah, there's a Godward side and a manward side to that as well, to every victory. So I want to just say this morning that God is my source. As a matter of fact, my God is my source. Remember last week, my God is faithful. Come on, let's just say that out loud, be good for us. My God is faithful. Let's say my God is my source. My God is my source because he's my God is my provider why? That means when, when you're standing in faith for something financial to happen and you're following God's uh, principles in His Word, He guarantees it. We expect it. Why? Because He's faithful. So one of the best decisions that, well, the best decision I have ever made is to look to my faithful God as my source and as my provider. 36 years ago, I was at Rhema Bible College. Wow. Don't look at me thinking I'm that old. <laughs> but 36 years ago, I was at Rhema Bible College, and I, I wasn't pastored Aren't you glad our kids are being ministered to right now at that young, and, and all the different age categories? I didn't come up like that. You know, you know when we went to church is when we had a need. <laughs> we went to church only, you know, I played football and one time I was hurt, so we went to the church that prayed for healing. That's a selective crowd, you know. And, 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 you know, but I'm there, and, and I received healing. And needs met. Uh, thanks, God. I'll see you. See you when I see you. So God is my source. God is my provider. Not when I'm in tough times, not when I'm in great times, but all the time. And... One of the greatest lessons I have learned, and I'm trying to convey that from my heart, with God's help, is God is faithful to be my source. God is faithful to be my provider, and God is faithful to be your source, and God is faithful to be your provider. One of the lessons that God 
taught me and has taught me throughout the years, and my wife and I, is never to look at man for your provision or your source of supply. God uses people, but a lot of times he's not going to use the people you thought, and you're going to, sometimes you know they have the means, they could help me, so maybe if I stand by them and I pray real loud about my need, maybe God will move. I guarantee you that time God will not use that person. You know, God uses our jobs. He gives, you know, our jobs so that we can have seed to sow. Um, He uses his word of instruction of tithing and giving so that there's, when you become faithful to his principles, you know what he does? He opens the windows of heaven. He pours you out and us out the the blessing and, and the provision that we desire of him. The devourers rebuked. But there was a day, I wasn't a tither, I wasn't a giver, and it traces all the way back to my time 36 years ago at Ramah. I hadn't been taught these principles. Here I was going throughout life, just get a third job if I needed it. I'm not saying working's bad because we, we know that we need to work, and, but I also thank God I work, but then I also thank God I, I, I believe Him to take care of me. God is God's my Father, and God, I've yielded to God's role as a father in my life. How many brave men are here in the house? And as a father, ladies and gentlemen, that's part of what we do. We talk to these men that as God is our father, we are to have the same characteristics in our family. And one of those characteristics is we provide for our families. I know there's singles here today. Maybe you want to remain single. That's fine. But God's your father. But I'll never forget, God taught me this lesson, that, that when I turned from the business world, and, and, I, and I, came, you know, I obeyed God, and I yielded to Him, and went, too long of a story this morning, but I just want to get these points done. When I, when I went to Ramah, He wanted to teach me as, that I am your source, don't look to anybody for anything. And, and as a matter of fact, I might have mentioned this recently, but it's good to mention it again in this moment, it, is that there are some people, a few people, uh, that said, hey, we'd like to support you financially. Would that be okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Matter of fact, I just remember something, Misty, that, that takes it to a different level. But as I, I, I went there, my wife and I were there, I, I made a decision after I'd heard this teaching, it was stirred up, and the Holy Spirit bears witness of the Word, you know. And, and I said, from this moment on, God, I'm a tither and giver, from this moment on. And, and he got my business a little more. He said, you know what, I want to teach you. I mean, I didn't hear a voice or a word, but I just knew on the inside of me. You just know what God's teaching you. That, that uh, he said, you know what? Um, it's good that you're tithing and giving, but you, right now, I, w- I want you to look to me as your total source, and you tell the people that wanted to support you to not support you anymore. I didn't rebuke the devil, thinking that was his instructions. No, but... Here's, here's something, Misty, that I, I forgot. I won't mention names. But I, not only did he say, you know, just, just me and you and my wife, we didn't have corporate type of jobs out there because we wanted to dedicate every moment we could to work and leave and, and do, do what we needed to do. So it's amazing how God provided for us. Just Amazing. And um, but one thing that I hadn't thought about but just came to my remembrance 
you know, we told the folks, don't, don't support us. I had found out that one of them was using their tithe to support me. I said, tithe doesn't belong to a person. The tithe belongs to the church. You know, when there was a whole, there's a whole type, type of teaching that people would tithe to the man of God. Don't you tithe to me. Mm-mm. You tithe to the house of God. You give your first and your best to the house of God. I mean, because you tithe and give, this whole campus is debt free. Because you tithe and give, we have a very healthy reserve. Don't say that. They won't give. No, because you give, we should get better shape all the time. But when I found out somebody was tithing to me, excuse me if, if you know who you are, I'm sorry. But they didn't know. But when I found out they were using their tithe money to tithe to me, you know, they're, don't, you, don't use your tithe money uh, to help someone else. If you want to do something beyond your tithe for someone else, the tithe is holy. It belongs to the Lord and it belongs to the church. I don't say it belongs to because I'm not trying to preach this legalistically, but there is a principle of the tithe that carries over into the New Testament. Don't you believe someone? Let me tell you something. Uh, there was a teaching going throughout the body of Christ. You don't need to tithe anymore. You know what? It, that teaching shut down churches. It's wrong. And, and tithing and giving is not just for the, for the benefit of the church. It's so God can open the window of his heaven for you and pour you out such a blessing, blessing there's not room enough to receive it. And then my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. And I, and because he's faithful. I don't know the times my wife and I would pull us aside and say, God sent us here to support you financially. So, well, great. Where'd they go? Well, every time they, they didn't do what they said they do, but guess what? I wasn't relying on them. We had another situation that someone said, listen, we'll do this together and we'll make sure it happens financially. And the minute I said that, my wife and looked at each other and said, we will never rely on that person ever. We're going to rely on God as our source. Because I know God is my father. I know my God is faithful. I know my God tells me in his word, in his instruction manual, how to be provided for, how to allow him to be my father who takes care of me. And there are principles. There's a Godward side that we need to do. Excuse me. A manward side we need to do. And then there's a Godward side of what he can only do. So from that moment 36 years ago until this day, we have never, ever not tithed. And if you, you would have seen how much we tithed when we first started, as compared to how God has blessed us to be able to tithe today, you know, there's so many, there's, there, there are some people, not, I'm not going to say a lot of people, but there are some people that connect with the tithe, that God begins to bless them, and all of a sudden they get to the place where they're tithing something pr pretty significant. But you know what? One dollar is as significant as a thousand dollars is significant to someone else, depending on how much they make, depending, depending, you know, when God was looking at that, uh, the woman uh, that had that mite, was it a mite, termite, mite? Okay, so, but anyways, it was, it was, it was a, Okay, a penny. So anyway, people say, she just gave a penny. Let's, see, let's seat her back in the back row. God said, she gave the most today. She gave all she had. But the principles of God, he's not trying to take everything away from you. I didn't even know I was going this way. God is... God is my source because he is. God is my provider because he is. God is my father. He takes care of me because he is. Man, this market is crazy. There's a lot of uncertainty into the world. But there's no uncertainty with what God says in his word. And we serve an unshakable kingdom. And these principles of the kingdom of God... 
is what causes us to have our needs met when it appears it won't be. Because who's our source again? There was a time my wife, yep, you mind me telling on myself this morning? Okay. What my wife had a purpose to do as, a, as an individual and as a church is never make decisions that would forfeit our ability to tithe and to give. That's how God dealt with us. And I would suggest as you learn these principles and as God reveals these things to you uh, to make that decision also. But there was a time that we were coming along and all of a sudden there was a business opportunity. And, and we should have never done it to begin with, so let me just say that. Let me tell you something. You will never have me come up here to support any type of business I'm in or this church is in. No. God supports the local church through tithes and offerings. And you business people that have an anointing and a grace upon you should be partnered with the church so that we can do that much more in the community, city, state, nation, and world. God's faithful. I, I, you know, there's sort of an anointing just still settling on this crowd today, family today. Let's let you know my, our heart is, is, is that you make God your source and your provider. As a pastor, I want to I share with you how do I say this? There are some preachers that will get you into fear so you tithe. Because you're cursed with a curse. There are consequences of not tithing. You know, God and, and doing the principles of God because we limit how God can help us. But I know sometimes, sometimes... What happens is we've, we've got, our, oh, I'm going to give my story. Don't let me forget that, Joseph. A lot of times we might be in financial shape that hasn't allowed, doesn't allow us to tithe and give. So I want to let you know there's no condemnation in this house today because we made a decision one time where, where we, we bought a brand new car because there was a business situation that was really multiplying in our life and all of a sudden it dried up. And I realized, oh my goodness, I slipped into relying on that. And, and guess what? When the, when, when, the, when the provision of that opportunity dried up, I had to start paying the bills. <laughs> I paid the bills. What I'm saying is I was relying on that. And when that dried up, we were strapped financially. We couldn't do anything. I don't know that we never... Well, let me tell you what we did. As soon as it got close for us not being able to tithe, we sold that car. That new car... I mean, there are sometimes you can go on a parking lot and smell that new car smell... But I tell you what, when you start paying that bill, that new car smell, just, it doesn't smell good anymore. Because it puts you at a level that, I love you enough to tell you the truth. And, and, and you know what, God is faithful. He's our source. He's our provider. He's our father. He takes care of us. And um, we sure enough, we sold that car. And I had to humble myself and go to my dad and say, Dad, we need help. He lent us an El Camino. <laughs> you know what I mean? Did you, did you see that? 
Well, actually, actually, it's more like this. That car almost started bouncing. And that's a good thing. I mean, that's fine. If you like that, that's great. Um, so we had to humble ourselves and and uh, you know what El Camino is. You have two seats up front. It looks like a car, but it's but it's got a, a what a truck bed on the back of it. So we just threw our kids in the truck bed and came on and ran on, and <laughs> kids were out there saying "Woo, <laughs> yay!" <laughs> Sorry, guys, that didn't happen. <laughs> we actually strapped them down with ropes. <laughs> no. You just don't, I'm, anyway, we, we had to humble ourselves, and, but the thing about that is I had to go before God and say, God, I'm sorry, because I, I slipped into not trusting you as my source. Man, that hurt me so bad. And, and so we continued to work the plan of, we continued to follow God's plan to be our source, our provider, to take care of us. And he has over the course of our life. He has in this ministry. Let me, let me tell you something. We are not going to build our next building if it violates the tithe. Because I value ministry more than I value facilities. However, God knows we need another building. Never listen to a a minister or a ministry that would minister stuff that would impact the health of a local church. We've been advised before because our facilities here are worth several million now. We've been advised before to put that ministry in our name. In the event anything happened, well, then we'd have seven million dollars. Wrong. Bad, no good. This is not my church, my wife and I's church. This is our church. And as God takes care of us, we take care of the church because we believe in this vision. And we've been set in this house. And we, you know, yeah, we tithe and give. Jeez, I guess I have to receive the offering now, right? <laughs> Time's up. Um, When I pause, normally it's because I forgot where I was going. (laughs) And I'm saying, where did I go, God? And then I ask you. Then if you don't know, we just shift on. (laughs) But, you know, I I just want you to know that God is good. Say with me, my God God is faithful. faithful. Oh, I know where I was. I I I might get some rebukes with this comment. My wife and I don't expect you to tithe when when you've made decisions that violate your tithe. Violate, that's so bad. But we we want to encourage you to make decisions. There, There are some of you in this congregation that have heard me talk like this before. You made adjustments and you're in better shape than you ever have been before. Because you had to change some things naturally. You can't pretend you're not, you can't pretend you don't have a house and not make your mortgage payment and that mortgage payment go to your tithe, go be your tithe. Pay your bills. And, and people are, I mean, I've heard it extremely teach, teach, taught like that. And there are people supporting the house of God and suffering individually. Because they made bad individual decisions. If you ever have a person that tells you to tithe to them, or instead of paying your mortgage, you tithe to the church, you just let, you know, let them know you're moving in. <laughs> but 
Don't you ever tithe in fear. Don't you ever, I, 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 my whole heart, do you hear my heart this morning? Yes. We have made mistakes along this line, and, and, but God has been faithful. Yes. Just build that building by faith. Uh, yeah, it's all by faith, but I'm not going to violate my tithe. And guess what? As God renews these principles and helps us to have more faith to do what we're doing, and uh, as far as tithing and giving, now, now I want to make sure you're, we're clear on this, though. Again, not being able to tithe is like eating all your seeds. Whenever we had a, have a tight spot here at Harvest Church, we look at our giving and make sure our percentages are good. When we went out to Rama, I told you all this, right? Yes, no? You didn't remember? You were sleeping? When we went, when we went to Winter Bible, the first couple of months had been tight here at Harvest. And by the way, I'm not teaching this because we're tight. I'm teaching this so that you can, you can learn and, and God can become your source. And, and uh, together then it just advances the kingdom of God and it strengthens the church and all the outreaches and worldwide impact. Uh, so we, we sowed a significant seed. And as a matter of fact, it hurt my heart, but I had to make a decision on our festival that our numbers were too tight to bring this thing to the community. So guess what? We're not just going to take it away from the community. We're going to celebrate our kids and scale back a bit because guess what? We have a budget. Just, just spend it. God will stop it. There is such a practical side to this source and increase because... God's going to say, yeah, I want to be supernatural. You're tithing and giving. I want, I, want, I want to take care of you, but you are terrible with money. You don't even know how much money you have. You don't even, you don't even know how much money needs to come in. So how, how do you know what you're going to do? All right, let's go ahead and ask you to go to, the, go to our website, <laughs> sign up for financial peace. Just, I rebuke that. I don't want to do any of that stuff. You're limiting the hand of God upon your life. When you're not, when we're not good stewards, I know this church is a good steward because I oversee the finances, and I, I don't touch finances, I, I don't, but I oversee every penny of it, and that's a strength of mine. Well, we must, well, just might as well say God is good. Did I get everybody out of trouble today? So, so anyway, know my heart when we talk about this. Know my perspective. I am not going to put fear in you by saying you are cursed. Because last time I read in the Word, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, everyone that's, that, 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 that is cursed hang up on a tree. I was going to go and reflect on the Old Testament where God had a, an agreement, a contract with Israel as to if they would do certain things, then he would do certain things, right? And it was a contract. It was a covenant. And you know God's going to do his part because he is. Now it's up to us to figure, you know, do our part. And back then it was a lot of laws and this and that and that and that. If you obey me and da da da, then all these blessings will come on you and overtake you. How does that apply to the New Testament? Let me read a scripture to you. At least get a scripture to you today. Hebrews 8, 6 says, but in, in fact, the ministry Jesus has received is superior than theirs, that Old Testament and the Old Covenant, as the covenant of which he is a mediator now is superior to the old one since the new covenant is established upon better promises. You, we better, no, we got to go, but 
with your devotion time, read Deuteronomy chapter 28. Now, I'll pick that up here next week. It's too important not to go through it. It talks about you'll be blessed in your storehouse. You'll be blessed in your work. You'll be blessed coming in. You'll be blessed going out. I mean, God, and, and he'll take sickness away. from. There's just so many things that is involved in the blessing in the Old Testament. And then God said in the New Testament, if that was a blessing, you have a better promises, better. <laughs> My, if it's better, it includes that plus something. And the plus something in the New Testament, Lord Jesus, I'm talking about it. The, I mean, the, the plus is that that, that this New Testament comes with, 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 with the advantage and blessing that I am forgiven. And, 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 and then the, one of the greatest blessings in the New Testament covenant is we have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. Come on, I'm not talking about material things. I'm talking about being saved in Christ. I'm talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit in Christ. Like, like God ministered through my wife this morning, in Jesus' name, you are free. And they go so much beyond that. And, and really, if you want to know our covenant rights beyond the, the different material blessings and stuff like that in the Old Testament, thank God, our, one of our greatest privileges of getting to know who we are in Christ, what we have in Christ, what we can do in Christ. Don't you leave this place condemned. But leave this place challenged. God wants to, and, and matter of fact, you know what? God isn't only faithful, He's merciful. And a lot of times He's merciful until we know that we know. That we know. Mm hmm. My wife had to step, uh, take a step back in our finances when we made that mistake, and then, then, then God began to prosper us. But Listen, your tithe and giving is not playing the slots. So some, you know, because of the decision we've made in the past, sometimes we have to get our act together a little bit, and all of a sudden we start applying God's principles, then all of a sudden God begins to increase us and take care of it. And, 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 and let me tell you about a good God. He'll meet your needs if you have the heart to change, and you have a heart to do these things, but you act on them. And then in, even in the midst of the wrong decisions we made in the past, God will provide for us because we are on the right track. Even when we don't have those things engaged because God, God's a loving father. It, it, it would be like me saying to Hannah and, and Joseph and, and Rachel and our, our, our kids um, that, okay, I'm not going to say pretend I'm God because that's, that, that's, not, that's not good. Um, and by the way, anybody that starts to act like that, any minister starts to act like that, The greatest of us all is the most servant of all. But what if, what if my kids, you know, didn't know these principles and, you know, I was helping them financially and, and well, you know, when they, when they were in our house, we took care of them because that's, that's a father and a mother's job, Right? And it depends if they're acting right or what they got and what they didn't get. If I have a kid that has no self-control, why? Why would I buy them a Durango with a Hemi? What's a Hemi? I don't really know what it is, but it sounds like... Vroom. So, so say my kids are making bad decisions and I couldn't condone those decisions, so I had to sort of pull back from them because those decisions will lead them to devastation. Those decisions will lead them to potentially eternally without being without God. So what if they all of a sudden came to themselves and they had to change some things and fix some things, and, but they had needs, but their heart had changed and their heart was, I see it. Forgive me, Dad. Forgive me, Father. Am I going to not provide for them? As they get their act together, I know there are, there are laws. 
I know the law of sowing and reaping. Also know that God will provide us seed to sow even when we don't have it. I'm stuck right now in this service. I don't know what to do. I just need you to hear me is what I need to hear. We're going to talk about these principles, and then we're going to see what God's part is, and then we're going to see what our part is. A preview for next week. Father, thank you for this word today. I did my best to communicate. Forgive me if I've um, stepped out of bounds in any way, fashion, or form. But Father, I want to thank you. I want to thank you and honor you for your presence today and your word today. And Father, help us by your Holy Spirit to apply these truths to our life. And, and let's just all ask God individually. Maybe, maybe you haven't missed it in these areas, but maybe you have. Let's get it right. Father, forgive us for not having you as our source and provider. Thank you for the good job you've given us. And but that really provides seed for us to sow so you can take care of us and so those seeds can be multiplied. But Father, I want to thank you for your mercy that's new every day. And Father, help all those of us that have made bad decisions to get on the right track and I thank for mercifully helping meeting the needs as we change our heart right now and work toward implementing your word in our life. Thank you for the laws of the kingdom of God. They do rest upon the laws. If you understand sowing and reaping, the word says, and you understand the laws of the kingdom. And God, you're faithful. Come on, let's just thank God he's merciful. Oh, God, you're merciful. Thank you for ministering to all of us right where we are. As we continue to pray this morning, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity to receive him now. Man, one of the greatest things you could ever do. One of the greatest things you could, no, the greatest thing you could ever do is to give your life to God. It's sort of like a seed. And boy, when you receive salvation, you become a whole new creation. begins to bring out of you things that are just wonderful, Christ-like. And you'll begin to fulfill your purpose. If you're here today and say, Pastor Coin, I, I, I would like you to include me in this prayer of salvation. I'm, uh, I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. Or when I was young, I, I think I prayed the prayer of salvation, but I just want to be reassured today. Or if you just want to be included in this prayer, either one, just raise your hand right now. Say, Pastor, pray for me. I didn't see any hands. You guys see any hands? For those online, we're just going to pray a general prayer. Maybe you wanted to raise your hand, but you didn't. Those online, let's pray this together. Say, Father. I believe you sent Jesus to die on the cross for my sin. I believe on the third day you raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus, I believe you're alive. With all my heart, I receive you as my Savior, as my Lord. Forgive me of my past. I receive you now. 